Thank you so much for joining me for our Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. You know what I like to do here. Say it with me, enlighten, inspire, and empower you to be your best self. His name is Richard Salas, and he's the author of The View of a Christian. So God's view of us in Christ is to be the view that we have of ourselves. Let me tell you a little bit more about Richard. He received Jesus on January 17th, 1980, and has been living on fire for the Lord ever since. He had a cry in his heart for more of God, and God answered his cry with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and then the Word came alive. As the Word began changing the image that he had, he lived by into the image of God had for him, a passion for helping others in their spiritual development began to grow. He has shared truths with multitudes of individuals at luncheons, Bible study groups, nursing homes, and various churches, ranging from a few members to hundreds of members in multiple cities and in different states throughout America. And we are so glad that he is able to join us. Thank you, Dr. Angela, for having me. Now, you have a very interesting book, and the title is The View of a Christian. Why this title? It happened when I was searching and I was doing other things, and the Lord told me how I see myself is vitally important because he is the one that it created me, so I needed to have his view of me if I was going to live the life he created me to live. Yes, yeah, so I, I began pursuing the view of a Christian, how God sees us, how God saw me, and that is how this all transpired. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely that important. That is true. He said we to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Mm-hmm. Well, that is where the image resides. It resides within each and every one of us. That That's mm-hmm. our control center. And then he tells us that we don't love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn to love myself first and see myself rightly before I can love anybody else. Mm-hmm. 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 And so as I develop this view that God has of me, in me, then it became easy to love other people. It wasn't about me performing. It was about me positioning myself to be used. Mm-hmm. And one of the greatest things he told me was, if you don't see people the way I see them, you're in sin because mm-hmm. I don't see them the way that you see them. And I thought about that, and I looked at the life of Jesus, and he never saw people the way that the people of the day saw the people. You know, mm-hmm. like with the, with the woman called adultery, he didn't see her like the rest of them saw her. That's right. The lepers, mm-hmm. he didn't see them the way that other people saw them. He saw them the way the Father saw them, and he Mm -hmm. responded accordingly, in love. He met their need. I like how you said that. Yes, he met their need. And isn't isn't that the important thing? Not not the labels, not the various things that that we see that are broken or bad or wrong or incorrect about about the person, but instead he saw them at at their knee. Well, you know, yes. that, that leads me to my next question for you, and, and that mm-hmm. is how important is it for people to see how God has made us? It's important because inside of each person is a snapshot of themselves. Mm-hmm. They have this image of how they were trained to see themselves through the media, through family, through their associations and friends, mm-hmm. and that is what governs their thinking their belief, everything Mm -hmm. about them. And truly, we try to outlive that image, but we can't because it is our image. Jesus said, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. So we can never get beyond this image. This view is so important because it controls everything. We live Mm -hmm. from the inside out, not from the outside in. And God wants us to change that image in us so then we can live from the inside out, with our spirit and soul being in agreement once again. Mhm, mhm. I love that. What a wonderful reminder that we live from the inside out. I, I love that. I love that. So, if we if we are to remember that we live from the inside out, how important is our own view about ourselves, or how important is it for us to have the the true image or view of who we are? Good question, Dr. Angela. It's important because 
we live trying to satisfy other people, mm-hmm. and yet we can never satisfy somebody else. We cannot be all things to all people. We can only be what God created us to be. Mm-hmm. And this image that we have, when we, that God has, when we establish it in our heart, we will realign or restore our spirit and our soul together mm-hmm. and create a new man. The Bible tells us to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And when we do this, now it's easy to become positioned to be used by the Spirit of God mm-hmm. who will use our lives to bless other people. We truly will become his mouth. We'll have his eyes and his hands to reach out to other people and love them on the level that they really need to be loved on. Mm-hmm. And that's to bring them into contact with God. But as long mm-hmm. as this image is perverted that we got from the first Adam, mm-hmm. we're hindering ourselves, believing that what we do is more important than who we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being raised being raised in this world system, the view we have was on performance. But here comes this holy God who says, I don't want your performance. Mm-hmm. I, I want your belief. I want you to mm-hmm. trust me. I want you to obey me. Mm-hmm. And I accept you just as you are, the way I made you to be. And, and that's, that's hard to the mind. You know, cause now here's this guy saying, I don't want your ability. You ain't got to perform. We're like, I've been performing all my life. Right. But now you want me to just lay that aside, like, <laughs> don't perform, just be. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Don't just perform, just be. Yes. yes. I love that. I yes. love that. I really, really do. You, now, you, now, you mentioned something that perhaps someone is a, a new Christian, a, 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 a babe in Christ, if you will, and you said mm-hmm. something that they may not be familiar with. Many of you may be, but just in case we have some new, some new folks, listeners, um, yeah. and you said a new man, that you put on this, this new spirit, this new man. What, what does that yeah. mean? Well, the way God made us is we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live inside of a body. When God first created man, his spirit and soul, or his control center, mm-hmm. his heart, his soul, his mind, they were one, and everything flowed out of him like it was supposed to. When he committed high treason, he died spiritually, and he created another man, which would be his flesh and his soul. And he learned everything through his senses because he was cut off spiritually from God. And that image now is perverted. He says in Genesis 6 that the imagination and thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually, and that is what we inherited from the first Adam. So upon being born again, we are spiritually made new. We receive the life and nature of God. But now we need to go get our soul, our control center, our heart, and bring it back under the jurisdiction of our spirit, whereby creating a new man. Thank you for explaining it that way. I think that that really made it plain for someone who perhaps wasn't familiar with that mm-hmm. term. Now, you talk about the the various images that, that we should have, understanding who we are in Christ and understanding who we are as our individual selves, but then understanding that that we are also a person that is under the Lord. If we, Once we have yes. submitted ourselves to God, that we, that we are this different person. Where is... Where is the image of ourselves? Where do we find the image of ourselves? How do we make sure that we are reading what we need to be reading, that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing so that we can keep the correct image of ourselves before ourselves? Yes. Good question, Dr. Angela. The image resides within our heart. Mm-hmm. And the, Now, the world tells us our heart is a blood pump, and that's true for our body. Mm-hmm. But as a, a spirit being... It's our control center. It's where we live from. In Proverbs chapter 4, he said, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Mm-hmm. And in our heart, which the only way we can get there is the Word of God. No man, no medical, no device, no anything can show us this heart. Only We, we can only see this heart in the Word of God. Mm-hmm. And as we meditate on the Word, as primarily in Acts to Revelation, is where we find us, the church. Mm-hmm. It's when we will develop within us that correct image of who we are, what we are, and what we can do in Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when that's established through meditating, which is a taboo thing for many Christians, but it shouldn't mm-hmm. be taboo because <laughs> meditating started with God. Mm-hmm. It, didn't start, it didn't start with the world. Okay. God told Joshua to meditate, 
Before Joshua, mm-hmm. Moses had to meditate. Before mm-hmm. Moses, Abraham, he told Abraham, count the stars. But he was telling him, look up, meditate. Because mm-hmm. there's no way this man could have that many kids. You know, he right. couldn't have one wife that could have that many kids. You know what I mean? So he had to be using his imagination. Mm-hmm. And, he, mm-hmm. and he did. And, and, and in doing that, he then walked in faith. It said he believed God. And God connected imagine, our imagination, our, our ability to meditate on faith. He says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm-hmm. The primary way to meditate is to mutter or speak. Mm-hmm. So in speaking the word of God, we're actually meditating in the word. And that's developing in us the faith needed to be successful in seeing ourselves the way that God sees us. I am so glad that you said that you reminded our listeners that meditation started with God. And it's like, well, you know, uh, Christians, this is not something that we need to be afraid of. Um, Just because uh, other people have decided to make the word a little bit more popular, uh, you know, vocabulary-wise, doesn't mean Mm -hmm. that we have to give it up because it was it was created for us as a communication style to, to spend time with the Lord. I love it. Thank yes. you so much for reminding yes. everybody. Where can they get a copy of your book or where can they follow you online? All that good stuff. Okay. The book is available from westbowpress.com. It's available on amazon.com and barnesandnoble.com. Mm-hmm. And at the present, I have a web page called Pursuing God on Facebook, and another one called Believers Quest Pursuing God on Facebook, that they can follow me, contact me, and interact with me. Alrighty, listeners, we need to go to break right now, but don't worry, we will come back and continue our conversation with Richard Salas. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spock with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. We are talking about the view of a Christian. This is a book by my guest today, Richard Salas. Now, Richard, we were talking about, you know, we have these various views of ourselves. You know, our, our, our parents have given us a worldview. Our community has given us a worldview. Our scriptures give us a Christian view of who we are, and we're trying to figure out what's going on. Who am I for real? So my question to you is, where did our view come from? Like, how how did we come up with these various views of who we are? Good question, Dr. Angela. Our view was inherited from the first Adam. He, He represented all of mankind, and all of us were to come out of him over a period of time. And whatever he did, it affected us. So when he died, we died. And we inherited his perverted view. And it's nobody's fault. It's not even our own individual fault. We were born with this and didn't know it. Mm-hmm. Our parents didn't give it to us. So you can forgive your parents. They, they <laughs> cannot do this to you. Mom okay. and dad did not do yeah. it this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Brother, and, brother and sister didn't do this to you. Mm-hmm. Everybody was, we was all born with the same perverted image. But yet God has an image that fits mm-hmm. all of us. And we should be looking to his image that he has and forgive everybody else, and set ourselves free from blaming other people. Yeah, it, it, was, yeah. it was inherited. Not, not do anything to get it. It was given to us. That's mm-hmm. why the last Adam came. So the day we got born again, we inherited the ability to have his image. Mm-hmm. And thank God for that. Thank God for the fact that God had um, a plan that he yes. knew exactly what was going to happen. And I love the fact that because many times people have the conversation and say, well, you know, I really wish that God had just made us obedient just from the gate, you know, that he just made us the way that we were supposed to be. I said, you know, but the, the freedom that he gives us in, in our free will and our, yes. our right to choose, you know, it's so it's so important the same way that we choose um, our spouses or our mates, the, the same way that we we choose to participate in the things that we participate in that are that are giving back to the greater good. The the right to choose is so important, and I and I love that God yeah. even extended that that to us. Well, why do we why do we not see ourselves? 
the way that God sees us. I mean, we have our Bibles in front of us. We have so many teachers and preachers and, and people that are trying to remind us. But why is it that people just, we just can't seem to see it? People, I believe that they, the people I've experienced, they don't see it because they're more focused on behavioral modification. Mm-hmm. We, we believe if I change my behavior, I change my view. No, your view is spiritual, your behavior is natural. So what you have to do is go to the inside first with the Word of God. And when you renew your mind to the Word of God, you change your view of yourself, which will ultimately change your behavior. Mm-hmm. But behavior modification is rampant. You know, mm-hmm. because if I do something wrong today, I do something good tomorrow, I'm saying I changed. I haven't changed. I just changed what I did, but I didn't change me. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't think it's given. I don't think the heart is given as much importance as it should be given, because that's where we live from. The, the Bible says, "Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life." We live from the inside, not from the outside. But mm-hmm. we was raised believing the outside is more important than the inside. But mm-hmm. here's God mm-hmm. saying, "No, no, no! You can't see me, and you can't see you. We don't even know if we got a brain, because we've never seen it." But mm-hmm. through medical devices, they can show us our brain. Well, same way with the Word of God. Only the Word of God can show us what we truly are and what he truly made us to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that answer. I love that answer. Only the Word of God can show us what we were truly made to be. And isn't that true? Mm-hmm. And, and yes. going back to uh, the answer that you that you kind of talked about in the in the first segment was, you know, spending time with God, just sitting down and meditating on the Word and, and, and seeing how He speaks to us. Um, yes. So, like, I'm one of those people that believe that there's no such thing as happenstance. And I believe right. that many times people will be um, drawn to drawn to a particular Bible, um, and it's just like, you know what, this Bible has been sitting here all day. I don't even know why I put it on my coffee table because you're supposed to read it. Or they pick it up and they said, you know, I just opened up my Bible and, oh, I read the scripture and it just really spoke to my heart. And it's like, that yes. is not that is not happenstance. Right. That is Holy Spirit prompting you yes. to do what you're supposed to do. And I just love how we get we get those promptings, and when we follow through, boy, yes. can it can it really and truly change our moment? You know, it yes. can really and truly change our moment of now. Yes, well, if we change, if we change mm-hmm, our view, we change our destiny. That's right. Mhm. Mhm. You really, you really, really do, and it's people are so funny because we will walk around and say a, a a mantra, or we will say like a. Um, um, a phrase, a, a motivational quote. You know, if you can, if you can see it, you can do. I, I forget. I can't think of how it goes now. If you, if you see it, you can believe it. Or if you can, you know, if it's in your eye, if it's in your mind, then you should be able to achieve it. And it's like, of course, if we're willing to teach our little elementary school kids that. You know, then surely the Bible is exactly the same way, and that we should be able to walk in faith and not just walk by sight. You know, it's yeah, a, it's amazing. Reading. Yes, so mm-hmm. and reaping is a part of God's plan for us. Mm-hmm. And we, in this society, we want to reap without sowing. Mm-hmm. It's, all, it's all microwave. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I, was, I was talking to a friend today, and it's like, okay, God says the study to show yourself approved. But see, mm-hmm. Christians want Christians want the diploma without studying. Oh, you can you can do that mm-hmm. in the world, but you can't do that with God. Okay. You have to put in the time to study His heart. It's not a mm-hmm. book of do's and don'ts. He loves us unconditionally, so we're okay. reading an unconditional love of this person, whom we have yet to meet, but yet we can't experience in our yeah. everyday life. Yeah. But He don't have no strings. He don't have nothing hidden agenda about us. He's going mm-hmm. to love us exactly as he sees us from the mm-hmm. inside out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Now, and, and I'm glad that, that you mentioned that because in your book, one of the things that you talk about are the five ways that God sees us um, without, of course, giving away too much that's in the book because, yes, you still have to purchase a copy of the book. Can you um, kind of give us a, a, a brief hint at what you're talking about when you talk about the five ways that God sees us? Yeah, the first way is unconditional. 
God has no strings. He separates who we are from what we do. He bases his love for us on Jesus, and he put enough in him. So with the same love he loved Jesus with, he loves us with. And if he loved Jesus unconditionally, he loves us unconditionally. Mm -hmm. The next view he has is a perfect view of being a spirit that's alive under him. He removed spiritual death from our spirit and put his life and nature in us. He says, as he is in heaven, so are we on earth. Mm -hmm. The next view is a righteous view. We all try to think we're doing what's right, but only the way that God sees us will fulfill us. We can accept ourselves based on him and what he's done and not on performance. He's made us righteous in the beloved. Another view is established. He established the perfect view for us. He said that he's at work conforming us into the image of his dear son. That, con that conforming is taking place in our heart to make mm -hmm. our heart match our spirit. And the last view is a heavenly view. Now, I like this one because mm -hmm. it's a kingdom view. It's being a kingdom citizen. If we can say we're a citizen of the United States or any country you live in, if you're born again, you are a citizen of heaven. You have all the rights to everything that's in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the government will protect you way better than our natural government because mm -hmm. they only look at the natural. But God's kingdom covers our spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I love it. Yes. Mm hmm that is such a, a, a great way to put that, you know, that, that God is so much more. That if, if you like being this citizen, imagine what being a citizen of the kingdom is, is all about. I, I really like that one. So yeah. what, what would you say um, God has given us as far as how we're able to change our view of ourselves? Good question, Dr. Angela. He's given us three things, uh, three primary things. One, mm -hmm. the image of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He sees us in his son. He doesn't see us apart from Jesus. He sees us in him. The next thing he's given us is his word, which we call the Bible, but it's really our constitution. Like mm -hmm. he told Joshua, mm -hmm. this book of the law, this book of our constitution shall not depart out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. so that we can know our inherent rights that we receive because we're in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the last thing he's given us is the Holy Spirit. Without him, none of this would be possible. Mm -hmm. Jesus could not do the things he did without the Holy Spirit in his life. He could not keep the word without the Holy Spirit. But because he had him, Jesus walked as a perfect man and showed us how we can walk perfectly as he did with God. Mm -hmm. Not to please people, but to please God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I as, as you were talking, it it made me think about how um, if we think back to all of the the wonderful advice that our I'm going to say grandmothers' generation, uh, many of the mothers of of our church, mm -hmm. um. They would, they would always have a bit of wisdom to give to you. They would always have a word of encouragement to give to mm -hmm. you. And if we think about, um, for those who, who may be having a hard, a hard time with, well, does Holy Spirit really, you know, come, come and talk to me? The same way that those grandmothers would give you a bit of encouragement and, and be able to kind of um, know when there was something wrong, when it's like, come over here and, and spend some time with me. And they were just yes. really great discerners. Of, mm -hmm. of of when you were there, Holy Spirit is able to not only do that, but do it on such a personal level, a level. that it can really be mind blowing, you know. Yes. And I am so I am so glad that that Holy Spirit is is available to us. I'm glad that you mentioned that Holy Spirit mm -hmm. was was there. Yes, he's he's a part of our salvational package. He mm -hmm. he is a down payment of our salvation. Mm -hmm. He's our living comforter. He's also the anointing who covers us. He's also our teacher, our leader, and our guide. He's mm -hmm. also our protector. He's everything to us that he was to Jesus. And he's here to help us get knowledge of God back into our heart so that our view of ourselves can now be based upon 
that intimacy that we have with him. Mm-hmm. And as we study the word, that's exactly what he'll do. He's the one that takes out the dead things and put in the new things as we stay true to the word of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He takes out the dead things and puts mm-hmm. in the new things. Ah, yeah. that's a nugget if I, right there. If I can put it this way, he takes out the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he puts mm-hmm. back in the tree of life mm-hmm. into our heart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To where we see ourselves as God sees us once again. Yes, and that is that is so so important. And you know, when you, when you said that, that really that really made me think about um, uh, some of our young people that may be struggling with their own their self value, their self worth, and yeah. really seeing how important they are in our world and. The, the teenagers nowadays are, are dealing with stuff from a totally different perspective than any of the rest of us. You know, we didn't have social media. You know, we didn't have Internet and all those kind of things where there's mm-hmm. cyberbullying and all that that's going on. And it, it really that, – that really – that really spoke to me in that moment that I hope that they will be able to understand that it's, that it really is so much more. Well, it is time for us to go to break, but Richard, again, just in case someone tuned into the show a little bit late, I want them to be able to find you online. Where can they follow you online? Uh, Pursuing God on Facebook and Believer's Quest Pursuing God on Facebook. All right. I've not yet launched my internet page. I'm working on that one. Well, you know what? Facebook is is doing it right now. So Um, you know what? For many people, Facebook is is their first place to turn to anyway. So I can understand that. Well, listeners, we need to take a very short break. And when we get back, we will continue this conversation about the view of a Christian with Richard Salas. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. My guest today is Richard Salas, and he is out of Waterloo, Iowa. I believe I misspoke before. He is in Waterloo, Iowa, family. Yes, yes, yes. He is in the heartland, and he is the author of the book, The View of a Christian. Now, I happen to love that title, and but that is our title topic today. God's view of us in Christ is to be the view we have of ourselves. And I think that that is so absolutely positively true. So Richard, what view should we, should we have of ourselves? How do we come to the conclusion of our truest view of who we are? Yes, the view we have of ourselves is the one that God has of us. And it is being of his child. We are children of God. If we are born again, if we receive Jesus, we mm-hmm. became children of Almighty God. And he is the most loving, caring, providing mm-hmm. father we could ever know. He cannot be compared to our natural fathers because they can only do so much. But he sheds us, with, covers us with his love like nobody else can. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to know we're more than what we see. He made us more than what we see. And we need to come up to seeing ourselves more than just the natural side of our life. Mm -hmm. There's a whole world we've not yet explored. The greatest journey is from your spirit to your heart. Mm -hmm. That is where Mm -hmm. you're going to find your true self. Because as we walk toward him by believing what he says, we're taken off. Like blind Bartimaeus, he got up mm-hmm. taken off the clothes that identified him as being blind because he was expecting change. We, too, can get up and believe that we are just the way God said and walk away from those images that hold us back because mm-hmm. they're not from God. They, they were inherited from the first Adam. But if you've been born again, Jesus has now become your standard, and he said that you are heir and a joint heir with Christ. Mm-hmm. So you have equal position with Christ in the eyes of God. Mm-hmm. And God loves you. He loves mm-hmm. you like he loves Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now, we have to learn to love ourselves from the inside out and mm-hmm. put our weight and value on who he made us to be in Christ Jesus. 
and it, if I can say this one thing to help people, is this. Your worth and value to God was based on the blood of Jesus. And that blood identified you in God's eyes as being his child. Okay. Okay. So you're a citizen of heaven. That citizenship is yours forever. And you can live like a citizen of heaven now on this earth. And it just comes down to having God's view of you established in your heart. Mm-hmm. And you will see your life, your behavior, your desires change from pursuing things you thought would make you happy to now resting in knowing you already arrived. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, you said something uh, earlier is that we need to learn how to expect the change. Mm-hmm. And I think that so many times people don't expect the change. They they pray the prayer, and they mm-hmm. kind of hope that God will answer the prayer. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like they're they're yeah. really kind of fifty fifty. They're kind of shaky about it. They mm-hmm. they're really not sure. sure. Deep down in their heart, they're thinking, "Well, I don't know." God might not have heard me. Was he listening? Maybe I'm not worthy. What, whatever, whatever the reason is. So, um, and and this is just a kind of a side question. Why do you think that people are so lacking when it comes to expecting the change? Because they expect God to change them without them doing anything. Mm-hmm. But like it was said up in the front of the interview, God gave us a free will. Mm-hmm. So God can't touch us if we don't choose for him to. It's like we have to give him permission to change us. Mm-hmm. Now, faith is is one of those subjects that people don't like to talk about because mm-hmm. they think it, it's something that's way out there. But it's really how we interact with God. And truly, we interact with each other by faith. So we take each other at our words. Mm-hmm. And the more you trust the person, the more apt you are to take them at their word. The less you know about them, the less you're going to take them at their word. So mm-hmm. faith is the substance of things hoped, H-O-P-E-D, not hope, H-O-P-E, but hoped. Hoped mm-hmm. means it's already established. So this tells us what we're believing God for is in his past. He's mm-hmm. already done it. Mm -hmm. And we're bringing his past and making it our present. Mm -hmm. And in Mm -hmm. doing that, we're giving him the right now to enter into our now and make it like he's established to be with himself in the past. Oh, that's good. That's a nugget. I hope you guys picked up on that nugget. I love it. Making God's past our now because he's already done it. Ooh. I love yes. that answer. I love that. He's, so, he's yes, in Christ. he has. He's, al- he's already accepted us in the beloved, accepted mm-hmm. past tense in the beloved. He's already healed us by his stripes. He's already made us righteous. See, mm-hmm. everything we need, he's already provided. It would be bad to go to a store that never had any food. But you right. go to the stores that already are stocked. Well, God has already stocked with himself everything that we need. Mm-hmm. And then placed it in us, in our spirit. And now it's up to us to look inwardly through the view, through meditating, and bring it out into our heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about making these changes and, you know, each person, if they're honest with themselves, you know what you need to improve on. Like someone doesn't have to walk up to you and say, you need a better attitude or whatever it is. We know what we need to work on. So why is it so important for us to continually strive to see ourselves the way that God sees us? Because Dr. Angela, he's told us, he wrote about us in his book, our members in his book. Mm -hmm. He said he's given us a destiny. He has a plan for us. Mm-hmm. And the only way to get there to fulfillment of his plan and destiny is the view that we have. Our control center needs to be changed. Sin mm-hmm. just, just did not affect us on the spiritual level as, you know, as being a spirit. It affected mm-hmm. our spirit, soul, and body. 
and God wants to save us, spirit, soul, and body. Mm-hmm. And our control center has to be brought back into agreement. Ephesians 4.23 says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Well, mm-hmm. if I have to be renewed in the spirit of my mind, that's telling me my mind is not spiritual yet. That means it's fleshly. If it's mm-hmm. fleshly, it's against the truth because a carnal mind is enmity against God. So to see myself the way that God tells me, I have to do battle within because the battle is in the mind. Okay. The spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And these are the contrary of one to the other. And it's about the image. Either I'm a spirit or I'm flesh. I can't be both. I can't mix them. And God is telling me, you can be everything I created you to be if you let me save you, spirit, soul, and body. Mm-hmm. And since we're born again, the spiritual part is taken care of. Now the soulless part, the mental part, where we remember everything. Mm-hmm. Our soul is a container, and our mind is the door to that container. So we've got to go through the mind to get to the, to the storehouse. And we can put God back in there. We can put his truth back in our soul by renewing our mind. So it's vitally important to see ourselves the way that God says we are. Without it, we will live hoping and praying instead of being. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking for God to do something that he's already done. And we'll put mm-hmm. off to heaven what we can enjoy now. Because when we live in it now, we are being that light of the goodness of God that other people can see. Now, we won't see the light, but other people will see the light and be drawn to it. Not to us, for us, but be drawn to us for what God put in us for them. Right, right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's vitally important that we see ourselves yeah. the way that God does. Yeah. How can two walk together lest they be agreed? Mm-hmm. And people think, you know, in the world, well, as long as we go in the same way, we're in agreement. No, we're not. We just go in the same direction. You know what I mean? Right. To be to be in agreement, we got to think exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And we have to just bear down and believe, I can think like God. If I can mm-hmm. think like the devil, I can think like God. If the devil mm-hmm. trained me and taught me to lie, I can choose to tell the truth. I can speak okay. the truth just like God. Okay. It's not sin to think like God. It's our destiny. Mm-hmm. Why would mm-hmm. God create us in this class of being and not let us experience how it is to live there? Mm-hmm. It's the devil that puts the care before our face of all this glorious stuff we can have. But it's God who puts before us his truth so we can be like him. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so speaking within, kind of within that same vein, uh, how, how do we need to see ourselves? Like, do we... Do we need to keep our our outside good? Like we we hear these scriptures that says you know we 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 have to keep our temple looking good. So does that mean that we that we need to concentrate just on the the foods and stuff that we put into our bodies? Does that mean that we can't watch horror movies because we need to you know watch what's before our eyes? You know what do we need to what do we need to do? Because you know you have some people that. Uh, are on one one end of the spectrum all the way to the other mm-hmm. end of the spectrum, right? Yeah. So, and and we're not talking about anybody, but it just mm-hmm. depends on on your understanding and what you have been exposed to. So, how do we need to see ourselves, and how do we come to the conclusion of what is true and correct? We need to see ourselves by faith because we're a spirit being, and in seeing ourselves by faith, we are coming into agreement with how God made us to be. Now, see, when we got saved, that, de- that de- determined a lot of things about us because it all depends on what we got involved in. Mm-hmm. And many people got involved in things to fill voids in their life. But those voids cannot be filled with things. They have to be filled with the truth. They have to be filled mm-hmm. with the love of God. Mm-hmm. And I know I have quite a few friends who watch things that, you know, are questionable. Mm-hmm. But it comes down to the view that they have of themselves, the image that they have of themselves. Mm-hmm. Now, when they begin seeing themselves wholeheartedly like God says, then it's the spirit of God's job to let them know, hey, enough is enough. Right. You know, too many times we try to do the Holy Spirit's job by cutting people off. But see, we came to God as sinners. Mm-hmm. He saved us. When we, and we were sinners. He saved us. He loved mm-hmm. us when we were sinners. And he never told us to get rid of anything. He said, I'm going to accept you as you are. And as you walk with me, You'll lose desire for those things because your desire for me will grow. Mm -hmm. But we want to make people 
stop doing this or stop doing that, or God <laughs> will get you. No, no, he already got you. If you're born again, he already got you. Mm-hmm. Like a baby. A baby is born into a family. That baby is innocent. It doesn't know anything. Mm-hmm. It has the potential to be grown up if mm-hmm. everything is done right. But yet and still, it knows nothing. And God knows this. It's mm-hmm. awesome that he needs to know this, that we should not be forcing people to do do's and don'ts because that's not the love of God. God said, my goodness would lead you to repentance. Mm -hmm. And the greatest goodness we can give someone is understanding. Mm -hmm. To let them know that God knows them and we're here taking a hold together with them to help them rise up and be all they can be. And as we grow up in the natural, we got rid of some things and adhere to other things. It's the same Mm -hmm. way spiritually. As we grow up Mm -hmm. spiritually, we will move away from certain things and move over to other things. Mm -hmm. So the view of ourselves governs all of that. Now, in being balanced, we should take care of ourselves, spirit, soul, and body. But Mm -hmm. we should not base our life on the things that we do. We should base our life on the Word of God because we are a spirit. Our soul and our body is our servant, and we should take care of our servants. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that comes from us seeing ourselves the way that God says we are. Okay. And we have to learn. The hardest thing I've learned in life is to not trust in my senses, my feelings and my emotions, to tell me what's true. Mm-hmm. And just go by the word of God. For he mm-hmm. says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen is eternal. We are eternal beings living in the natural world. And when we get that view in us of being eternal, Mm -hmm. of being a spirit alive unto God, it will affect our soul, it will affect our body, and ultimately our environment. And we Mm -hmm. will be that great light in this dark world. Jesus Mm -hmm. wasn't the only light. He also said that we are the light of the world Mm -hmm. so that we can show forth this life and nature that we have on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. It's, it's Mm -hmm. It's not about getting people saved. It's about making disciples. We can't save people, but we can make disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And through the work of the Holy Spirit who's in us, he will save them when they come to the light. And that's where we drop people. We don't teach them how to live by faith, Mm -hmm. how to live beyond the senses, and Mm -hmm. put them out there and say, now you'll get somebody saved. What do they know? They don't know enough Mm -hmm. to save nobody. So they go out there and get beat up in this dark, evil world and Mm -hmm. come back to the church, and the church says, well, there's something wrong with you. There's something in your life that's, that's stopping you. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's not that they didn't have good intentions, but good intentions don't reach the goal of loving somebody the way the Bible says. Right. We should really right. take care of how we interact and care about people. It's not what we think. It's what God has said. If God said he loves them, we should not say God hates you if you do this. Mm-hmm. We should mm-hmm. tell them when you will learn to walk in the love of God, then you look at what you're doing and see if it's good enough to keep in your relationship with him. Now, see, in the natural, we'll do this. You know, we'll have people in our life and say, well, you know, they're good enough. We say, no, that person's not good enough. Oh, yeah, they're good enough. No, no, they're not. You ought to take a look at them. I don't want to hear that. To me, they're good enough. Mm-hmm. But when we show them the value in themselves and how they truly are, then they kind of decide, well, that person ain't good enough for me. And I ain't got to go through all of this that I went through to have a person in my life. God will bring to you the right people when you are looking in the right direction. Exactly, exactly, exactly. God will definitely bring you the right people. You you hit the nail on the head right there. Well, listeners, I, we are out of time. I I know it always gets extra good at the end. I tell you, isn't isn't that just like it? It's like when you're yeah. watching a, a movie and you have to leave. It gets real good at the end, right when yeah, it's time to go. End. Well, I tell yeah. you, thank you so much. And you know, being on radio, it's like if you missed it, so sorry that you missed it. But let me tell you, the the end was as good as the beginning. But of course, we are out of time. Richard, thank you so much for being on Daily Spark with me today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Angela, for having me. Appreciate it. And listeners, thank you as well for being here with me today. You know what I always say. May God shine his face upon you. May you continue to have his grace and his mercy with you each and every day. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone.